Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. By George, we are right in the midst of the elections, and, uh, and it's going to be a very interesting one. And uh, hopefully you will join us uh, throughout the election. And as you know, I happen to be running for county commissioner here in, in Multnomah County here locally. Come on in, Fred. And, um, and anyway, for position number two, and we're going to talk about that race. This is a very important one. Okay. Well, what we're going to do, and by the way, uh, joining me today will be Fred Stewart, and Fred's going to probably be asking me some questions in regards to my race and anything else we're going to be coming up with. In the second half hour, we may be joined by uh, maybe maybe Chad Dedman to talk a little bit about uh, the whole issue of uh, we need to solve that problem. One of the NAACP was on the front page of the Oregonian today, and it's really a sad note, and we need to do something about it. It happened to be a, an organization that's been longstanding through the black community, African-American community, and it's something we need to talk about. Chad has been visiting the board of directors and the board and going to the meetings and whatever. It'd be nice to get some update and whatever. And then the other thing we want to do is that, uh, and Fred is here, I uh, definitely want to get, we probably have in that, in that second half, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, real estate and the whole issue with uh, 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 Trader Joe's mm -hmm. and uh, where is that to date? And, uh, and possibly get some solutions to that particular problem, how we got into it, things of that nature. I think that's another important issue that we need to deal with. That would be the second half hour, to a certain degree. And then uh, on the first half hour, what we're going to be doing is, is right in front with your Fred's going to be the layperson, and he's going to be basically asking some questions and maybe talking about the races and whatever. Uh, maybe I'll just start off, Fred, with um, some of the endorsements of late, some very key endorsements uh, of late, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we'll start off with... Uh, uh, the fact that the Republican Party, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the editor, I'm talking about the Oregonian now. It's the largest newspaper, as you are, in, in the state of Oregon. And uh, it seems, though, the first endorsement I want to talk about a little bit about is Monica Wiebe, uh, who is running against uh, U.S. Senator Jeff Merkley. She was endorsed by the Oregonian for the Republican part of it, because a number of, mm -hmm. of, of one are feeling that piece. But uh, a very interesting person. She's a newer surgeon. They, they, they indicate the newer surgeon would give the GOP the best shot at unseating Jeff Merkley, as if to say the the race is on now, you know, between between her and Jeff Merkley. Um, that's one that's one of the area we're gonna we're gonna chat a little bit about. Another one that's most that's key to the area is this, is uh, is Multnomah County, okay. and Multnomah County, uh, uh, the Oregonian endorsed uh, uh, Deborah Kafori, and um, and they they indicated the, the timeline is Multnomah County would be more effective with Deborah Kafori as chair. Uh, I'm sure there's going to probably be a um, a, uh, a general, general, and there'll be a, a kind of a, a, a race between her and Jim Francis Tony, and I think that's going to happen, if you will. And that's going to be a very interesting race. But that's Multnomah County aspect of it, and I'll talk a little bit more about um, uh, the other races as, as far as commissioner in the in the Multnomah County area. But but first, I'm going to hit the city of Portland again. City of Portland, uh, we've got Sharon Maxwell, mm -hmm. and uh, she and, she's and, and be here Fish. Yeah, oh, she's going to be here. I thought she's going to be here soon, yeah. shortly. Okay, good. So she was, we'll talk a little bit more about her. And uh, it seems as though the Oregonian endorsed Nick Fish mm -hmm. over her, but he'll give her an opportunity. To, and of I think, the, and, the, and the key thing to her, 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 her race, if you will, uh, it was uh, something like uh, the, the 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 relationship between the city of Portland and Multnomah County. That is an issue. It's the largest city within the county, mm -hmm. and the county ha actually represents other outlining cities, if you will. But they tend to focus in the city, of, the city of Portland, with Multnomah County, as opposed to uh, the other. They, they just mentioned by Gresham and Troutdale and other, other small cities and whatever. But it would be very interesting to have Sharon Maxwell sit down with us. She happens to be a candidate. She's probably the number two. They, they probably, if if anything happens, there will probably be a run runoff between Sharon and uh, Maxwell. Any a runoff? If there will be a runoff, mm. you know what I'm saying. If there will, otherwise, if Nick Fish doesn't pick up the 51 percent, that's the way it's going to be. But she's she's a very dynamic person. There are other folks that are running in the race also too, but she's she's a she's right up there. She happens to be an African American female. She's a business person and whatever. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. But again, we'll talk from the standpoint that uh, I'm basically running for county commissioner. She's running for city of Portland, and maybe we might be able to talk about how would we deal with these issues between the city of Portland and Multnomah County and how, how they feel and how does the city of Portland feel about Multnomah County and what are the issues, okay? okay. But let's get back to, again, let, again, let's talk about the county for a minute. 
Uh, now, again, like I said, uh, Deborah Kafori was endorsed by the Oregonian, and uh, there was some other, and then as far as the commissioners who were running for that particular, especially position number two, I thought that was the most interesting uh, response to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the, to the persons that they, 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 uh, they endorse. And I'm talking about um, the endorsement of, uh, of uh, sitting commissioner Loretta Smith. As you know, she wears two hats right now. She's a sitting commissioner and she's also running for, running for IE the, the next four years, if you will, okay? Mm -hmm. But I wanna, I wanna read the, uh, I got to read this, uh, this piece in regards to the, their rationale for endorsement and how they identified the other folks who were running in that office. Unlike the other, the other offices of endorsements or whatever, they gave a nice sprawling kind of a, uh, response, if you will, to these individuals, and they named them and talked about their qualifications and felt good about mm -hmm. it. But this one is very interesting. Let's, let me go through this thing real quick. Like, four years ago, Smith ran for an open seat and beat out seven contenders, gaining momentum after the primary and surpassing front runner Carol Collimore in the general. Though Smith still has room to expand her impact, she is the most qualified candidate running for the seat representing North and Northeast Portland. Okay. The question, north and northeast, uh, District 2 goes out to Gresham and things of that nature, and I think that's pretty far, or east or whatever. Smith, a former longtime aide to U.S. Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat or she worked for Ron. From, I see she always makes it to the point about running for, uh, running and working for, for Ron for 20-some-odd for years, has focused her attention on creating opportunities for young people and small business owners. She's not a business person, for sure. Uh, she's especially proud of expanding paid internship to help teenagers develop work skills and a taste for public service. She's also known for looking out for at-risk people, particularly young African-American men. She also, she says she'll continue uh, the she'll continue anti-poverty efforts in her second term. Now, this is the Oregonian now responding to the, I mean, giving that rationale for the endorsement. Her three challenges are Teresa Redford, a self-employed business consultant, Bruce Broussard, a longtime activist with a public access television show, and Kevin Hall, a Northeast Portland graduate student. Though it's always healthy for incumbents to face opposition, the opposition of this case has an unfortunate tie. Both Rayford and Broussard have connections to Baruti Artery, a former aide to Portland Mayor Charlie Hales, who was disciplined for making sexually suggestive remarks about Smith at a public event. Broussard featured Arthur E. on his show and let him rant about Smith at stunning length. Arthur E. was an active presence at Rayford's kickoff rally. Smith downplays the topic, which is both gracious and astute. She'd rather, she'd rather her constituents associate her with good leadership, not as a stock character in an episode of men behaving badly. Mm -hmm. And mostly, she has good things to do. Voters should re-elect Smith and let her work with Kafori, Bailey, and her colleagues on taking care of the county's business. First of all, I'm going to ask you your reaction, guy. I, I have some biased feelings about this piece, but what do you think about this? That, that sort of an endorsement you and, know, and some of the contents. You know, the Oregonian. Uh, um, it wasn't a strong endorsement like you would expect for an incumbent. I can. They're in a tough position. I mean. Um, I'll be straight up, Bruce. I think you'd be better as a county commissioner than she is. I do. I don't think she's a bad county commissioner. Mm -hmm. I don't. The only thing a woman like Loretta Smith lacks is experience. You know, um, she is of a new generation of a lot of young black women um, who've not been really tested. You know, she's had her trivials and trials and stuff like that, but she hasn't been tested. I mean, you stand her next to her her mother, my mother, a bunch of other black women I know. Oh my God! You know she's she's just not been there, but she, but she wants to contribute and she should contribute because yeah. she wants to and she's and she's out there. So I'm one of the people who I don't think that she is the worst thing that's ever happened. I just wish she was more experienced. That's one of the reasons why I hope that that you win. I hope you go further, you know, further along. You know because we do need more people, not just black people that are experienced. Yeah. We need elective people who've got more life experiences than what we in generally have now. We've got a lot of people who are in leadership, but they really are just people who rely on others to do things for them. And you're always going to do that in politics. But they don't really bring anything sub substantive other than their, their, their ability to manage other people. And, uh, I mean, those are good qualities. I'm not saying that they're bad. 
But what the city of Portland needs right now, what Multnomah County needs right now, are straight up, flat out leaders. Period. Um, people who can notice things. You know, many years ago, I saw an interview with Donald Trump when he was building the Trump Towers, mm -hmm. and he was across the street in another building, and he looked across during the middle of the interview, <laughs> and he noticed that a guy was putting a window in wrong. So he tells this person what's wrong and says, tell them to go over there and fix it. That, that window's not right. I mean, mm -hmm. I think Trump Towers, I don't know how tall it right, is. Right. It's like, what, 20 stories tall, 30 yeah, stories right, tall? Right, right. A leader notices the little things like that in their community the, the, and the projects that they're involved in. They're looking out ahead. And the only time people have that innate quality, sometimes it's just, I don't know, nature-given, God-given, but most times it comes from experience. A person who has experience in life, done things, been there and done that. You know, and, you know, I'm, I, mean, I don't know. She's kind of lucky that Jules Koppel Bailey isn't running against her. <laughs> because he's white, and they would notice that how, how yeah. much experience he has. Yeah, See, yeah. unfortunately, you're a black guy. Oh, yeah, oh, so yeah. they're not going to notice your oh, experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because don't the Oregonian, you know, the Oregonian oh, yeah. doesn't talk about that. That's right. That's they don't right. talk about how, how your experience, your Vietnam vet, You've had a TV show. You've had a successful real estate business. You've had a successful restaurant. You know, you would think that the white people at, 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 at the Oregonian, I'm sure there's times they disagree with you and they don't like what you've done and things that you've said, I mean, in general. Just like they don't like things that uh, Warren Wyden has done and said and stuff like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But they always respect and honor how much he's contributed. The Oregonian, they don't even uh, honor how much you've contributed. You know, and that's why I tell people... I tell my close friends, those of you out there who know this, it's why I decided a long time ago I'm never going to be nice and polished and stuff like <laughs> that because, you know what, I, it's better just being a grill in this town. Cause yeah, but you're involved. It doesn't matter respect, how nice yeah, you yeah, are if you're yeah, a black person. Yeah, you can yeah. be nice and sweet yeah, yeah. and stuff. I mean, I can't believe the Oregonian yeah, mentioned your name, <laughs> didn't talk about while we're doing this stuff in real estate, how ex much experience you've got in real estate, that you've got a business. You're the only person here who's <laughs> W2'd anybody ever and that's running for office. You ever said you're a U.S. Marine, you fought for your country before? I mean, there are so many things they could have said, but they wanted to talk about Baruti. And then they want to ca classify what Baruti said as a rant. Yeah. That's almost like a code word to white people. Baruti's an idiot. Don't listen to him. Yeah, but yeah. they don't understand that most yeah, black people yeah, are yeah, listening too. to him. Yes. I ain't seen black people are agreeing yeah, yeah, with yeah. him. But a lot of black people are stepping back and they're yes. listening to what Broody said. Yes. And some agree, some disagree, some are in the middle. But, you know, he, he's, he's, he's got the background and the history to be considered, you know, a qualified entity. You don't have to call, re, refer to what he says. Maybe he didn't say talk to white people like white people like to be talked to. Maybe and he was on these shows, he was talking to other black people. I don't know. I think he was talking to everybody. But what I'm getting to, friends is that just because you don't like what he did or how he said it doesn't mean he's ranting. It doesn't. Uh, he just is not communicating the way that you're used to maybe in your life communicating, you know? And I think the Oregonian should be broad enough minded to understand that. Mm -hmm. You know, those white people that are down there at the, at the Oregonian, I mean, they're educated, you know? We assume that they know a lot of people and done a lot of things. Hell, some of them have been overseas. A few of them have been to Africa. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So you would think, gee whiz, they would understand the cultural, you know, subtleties in what was going on with Broody Archery. Yeah. And either they do know and they're just choosing to ignore it or they don't know. But the bottom line, there is a lack of curiosity somewhere in that leadership group. Oh, well. Well, you know, you know, and, and I, I wanted you to comment first before I commented on the article. But that, but again, too, they should have respected the folks who were running for office. You they know what should, I mean? but you should have got more respect. I mean, well, all of us should have been. And all due respect, mm -hmm. when I think about when I see Kevin Hall, a Northeast Portland graduate student, uh, this man is a family man. I mean, he's working on his Ph.D. You got know I me. Mean? He ran for office the last time. But around. Bruce, this is what I said earlier: white media, mm -hmm. like Oregonian press, you know, media. They don't talk about black people like that. Mm. You, you understand? Yeah, I mean, I got you. gosh, you know, a black person has to be. A, even look at, at what Charles Jordan. They, there are some nice things written about Charles Jordan. There were, but when you look at the massive impact he had on this oh, wow. the city oh, culturally wow. and everything, oh, wow. I mean, gee whiz, they. I can think of several people. 
uh, that they've talked about more that deserved it. Mm -hmm. You know, white people that deserved it, absolutely deserved it. Don't want to take it away from them. But clearly, Charles Jordan is in there, on, is on the same shelf with them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, uh, I, I hope that the Oregonian and media outlets in this, in this city understand how important it is for the, to the people of Portland that they start stepping back and doing a really intense, critical look at how they communicate with and communicate things regarding black people in the city of Portland. Mm -hmm. I don't think all of this is intentional. You know, there may be a Fred Silverman or whatever that guy from the Clippers. There may be a Silverman oh, wow. lurking around there oh, someplace. Wow, wow, wow. But I think in I general, I think in general, these people, it's just, it's just the culture is so embedded, they don't catch it. You, you understand? They don't see it. And I'm just hoping that there's somebody one day will say, you know, we're going to call BS on Fred and we're going to step back. And we're going to critique ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and you're, this endorsement would be a great one. I mean, if you look at the life experiences in Portland in the last oh, 20 God, years, uh, okay, okay, comparing you and her, who has done more to advance the people of Portland and to advance black people in Portland? If you want to help black people, then you compared to you and, 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 and Loretta. And this isn't saying Loretta hasn't done anything. You understand? I mean, Loretta's, Loretta's con con contributed. She's not a negative to the community. But the point is, we can't expect the Oregonian to, to do a reasonable assessment like that. Well, and that's sad, not just for black people, that's sad for everybody in Portland. Well, hey, because, it, because in all due respect, District 2 is not just a black community. It's not a black community. It's and the average white person should be able to lean on the media to, right. to not be biased, that's right. to give that's them right. a fair that's assessment. Right. That's right. So yeah. when, when they did what they did to you and Loretta in here, they didn't do it just to black people. I mean, they clearly let black people down. Mm -hmm. They let everybody down. They let the white people who are using this as a reference on who they're going to try to vote for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and like I said, it's just weird. There's, just, there's an arrogance in this sometimes that just yeah. amazes me. Well, let me, let me a couple other little points I would like to make. For instance, I want to give some kudos, if you will, again to uh, Teresa Redford, for instance, self-employed business consultant. Again, she has other backgrounds. She is an activist. She's going around and she's interviewed all kinds of folks. She, I mean, she really, she's very active. She's run for office. She ran for city council last time. Correct. Right? They've got the resume sitting right there in the front of her. Yeah, but she's not just, in all due respect, just a seven point. I'm just, I'm not pointing. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're backing up what I'm saying. I hear you. Just but, you but Bruce, you've got more experience than Teresa. Well. Teresa okay. is a business consultant. I'm still looking for the business she's consulted. But she's a young person. <laughs> right, from, right from, she should stay into the situation. She should, she's, she should be involved in she everything like involved, that. But, and I'm, I'm liking the fact that she but, is running. But she is not, does not have as much experience in Portland dealing with people, dealing with issues as Loretta. And Loretta doesn't have as much as you. Well, uh, you know, and, and just to make some of the comments, again, this is, I've known Loretta for a number of years. Me too. too. About 30 years or yeah, so. For Lor that. Loretta's yeah. good people. Yeah, she's good. In fact, she, when she was working for Ron Wyden, mm -hmm. I was working with Ron Wyden. Mm -hmm. I wasn't working for Ron Wyden. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was, I was with him because I, I knew that he had a, a, pa a, a passion mm -hmm. for seniors. And he was on my show. Yeah. I mean, he was on my show on a monthly basis, that's that matter. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and my point is that, so Loretta never got that, that experience. You know, I, I guess my point is that she's been there 20 some years, Fred. He mm -hmm. never uh, took the opportunity to maybe appoint her as chief of staff for this office or chief of staff for the for the Washington office wait, to wait. give her the experience and the exposure. Because as you know, like Peter DeFazio and whatever, he worked for a, a, a sitting congressperson and he ran and he ultimately won mm -hmm. because he had that experience and that exposure. And 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 so that's another problem. You, you got you got uh, Eric Sten, remember who worked for. Uh, uh, Gretchen Kafori mm -hmm. at one point in time got me. He got that exposure, that experience, and whatever. Then he ran. Correct. For but they got legitimate exposure. And I, I've got to say this point blank: she did not get the, she was not given that the opportunity to get a, a good exposure, if you will, to be able to be in the position. She there was no interaction, if you will, with issues uh, affecting the African American community. Well, Bruce, okay? that's a perfect question for our largest newspaper. Right. And Willamette Week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are. Matter of fact, than anybody to ask her. There's, there's three reasons why that could have happened. One, her boss yeah. never felt, though he feels she's qualified to be a county commissioner, never felt she was qualified to take leadership role in his in, in his own office. Mm -hmm. That's a great question because yeah. I think Ron Wyden's one of the best leaders oh, yeah. we've had in the last like fifty Ron. years. Ron is okay? very passionate. So about why that. wouldn't Ron Wyden, okay, 
uh, promote her to a major leadership position. I'm not talking about a major in his mind. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a major position that everybody understands. This girl is in charge of stuff. Why didn't Ron do that? Uh, DeFazio had that, and you're right, Eric Stin had that. Yeah. Okay. Now, the other thing is, maybe she didn't want it. Well, you know, the reason why you want to ask that question, maybe it, maybe Ron Wyden didn't think she could handle it. Then you ask Ron the second question. If you don't think she can handle being a chief of staff or a major l l uh, leader in your office, why do you think she can be county commissioner? That's an excellent question for the Oregonian to ask. Um, the next thing is maybe she didn't want it. Maybe she herself did not want to go that direction. She, maybe she felt there's a lot of reasons why a person may not want a, a major leadership role in a senator or a congressman's office. Get her answer for that. She may have a very good reason for that. Or the third one, and that's sometimes one, that can be a little embarrassing because I've asked her on numerous occasions. In fact, Bob Williams, you know who sits on, as you know, he yeah. sits on as a as a co-host at many times. But we tried, we've tried very much to get Loretta to be involved in the process, if you will. Even you know, and just come on and and articulate, talk to some of those issues that you're talking about. Uh, because initially, when she first ran uh, about this situation, we, you know, uh, thinking about running yeah. about this situation, you know, hey, we were saying, okay, fine. Well, we're going to treat her just like any anyone else trying to basically Well, well even if you didn't, I mean, she's a black woman. I yeah, mean, yeah. she was. My yeah. mother and all the, all the black women in Portland that I respect, <laughs> they are who they are wherever they're at. They don't run away from anybody. I've never seen my mother run away from an opportunity to tell anybody what's on her mind. Yeah. And all the black women I grew up with that I respect and honor, they never once sh uh, shied away for sticking up for their community or their family or the things they felt was right or wrong. I mean, that's the one interesting thing about Loretta is that she does avoid opportunities to have direct conversation with the black community. It's almost oh, uh, in any community. It's, well, you know, I mean, she talks to white people very well. Well, all due respect, I, she I, talks I, to white folks I got to take exception well. at the uh, at the at the uh, the League of Women Voters the other day. She didn't show up. Well, maybe she didn't feel well that day. At, at the largest at the largest senior citizen group, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, seniors in action, if you will, here in, in Multnomah County, she didn't show up. Well, you know, maybe I, like I said, Bruce, I don't know. Maybe she didn't feel well that day. But I've known Loretta for twenty years. I've watched at her the run this race and the last you know, race, and you know, we 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 we, were, we gathered together. We went to Willamette Week, mm -hmm. and it was good. I wish Willamette Week would release that video, if you will, just to kind they of probably give, will. give a sense of, they probably I mean, will. now, I'm not talking about after the endorsement, I'm talking about before the endorsement. Okay. You, you get my drift? You got me? Okay. So, but at the same time, I, I felt good about it. I called them up. In fact, uh, when the Mercury asked me to, to come in and, uh, and, and basically interview for the endorsement, I said, fine, are we going to all be there? Because she needed that interaction. We all needed that interaction. You got me? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, uh, they will basically uh, endorse based on what they've heard. You got me? Well, fair. I agree. And at the end of the day, the voters are going to have to pick, and so they need to honestly be able to get a good sense of who's running for office to make sure they get the. But most not just that. Position. I think it's important for the white community as well as the black community. Yeah. So black people of high stature, high level, um, have discussions even when they're disagreeing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, do I feel that? Loretta should be on the same show with Broody. Probably not. That's not going to end but well. But why not? But the oh, fact of the matter no. is, we, we solved that problem. Now, let, let's be re very respectful of Broody. Broody made it very, very clear when he got on the show uh -huh. that when, when it came down that he had harassed her, yeah. he, he, got, he was in his office, uh -huh. and the, his, the, Charlie Hill's chief of staff went to him and said, hey, you harassed her. He said, what? He picked up the phone, and she did not respond to him. She never got back to him. I understand that. And that's that. a fact. I understand that. See, and that's wrong. I understand that. And that's one of the reasons why, why we had him very, here on this show. A very, very good, a bad, a bad idea. Put it like this. If Baruti had offended my mother in any way, oh, yes. and my mother is a oh, yeah. straight-up black yes, woman, okay? Yes, yes. Uh, Church-going black woman, by the way. But my mother would have no problem, you know, setting him straight. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? I saw my mother set... But why, about why, 20, but why didn't Loretta do about it? About 20, mil no, you tell me, why 20 military guys okay. straight one time. But why, <laughs> why, why do you think Loretta did not at least give the man a call and straighten him up? I think the people around her probably said no. But look, that's maybe her personality. I mean, maybe she's not a person, a leader of that level. But then she uh, might have been type. set up. Not maybe a level maybe she might have been set up because, you know, then the Roy J thing came out. I mean, it, uh, all sorts of I, things. I just look at it that, you know, Loretta, it, 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 at this point in her life, maybe this will change later. At this point in her life, she is not the type of leader you that's that. going to step into somebody's face and be the leader. She's not. She's not a Hillary Clinton. She's not a Condi Rice. She's not a Barbara Roberts. You understand know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. She's not that type of person. That doesn't mean she's not a... I'm not saying she's a bad person. You understand? Know I'm, I'm just saying that that's just not her style. 
you know what I'm talking about? This is not her style to, uh, to deal with Baruti. If she had dealt with Baruti, I think, in the way that I think all of those women have... Every one of the women I've mentioned, I guarantee have dealt with a situation like with Baruti. Yeah. But we don't yeah. hear about it. Yeah. Because those women... They're leaders. No, they're the they time. deal with it. Yeah. And, yeah, the, yeah. and they deal with it, and it's yeah. done. Yeah. You, you understand? And you, you, don't need, um, you don't need all the drama that's come afterwards. Well, you know, it's kind of you make that point, because when we were at the Willamette Week, and we were all together, and after the interviews and whatever, mm -hmm. and after I was there, and I approached her, and I said, hey, Loretta, what's up? I mean, you know, why don't you come on the show, and we can talk about this piece, because if this thing is bothering you about Peru, I want to an answer it, too. I want, a, I want an answer. So I can talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. And her response to me, Bruce, you're too demanding. I mean, what do you mean? I'm just a talk show host. Well, you know, that's a great question for the Willamette Week. Now that they hear about that. Yeah. Okay, Loretta, now Bruce is very demanding. Man, are there any white people like Bruce <laughs> in Portland, in Oregon, that are also too demanding? And can you give us their names and an example? How about Lars Larson? Would she go on Lars? Uh, she probably wouldn't go on Lars either. She probably would bring up Lars. She probably would bring up Lars. You think she would go? No, she probably wouldn't go. Oh, wouldn't go. Yeah. I've never heard her ever going on Lars. Most, I, I doubt she did, but it would be interesting if she would go and deal with Lars and not deal with you. Uh, yeah, right, you understand? Exactly. To, me, oh, yeah. to me, that's, uh, yeah, that, yeah. you know, socially, yeah. You, yeah. you understand? That's a very good question to ask. Yeah. You know. What about Steve Dean? Steve on Dean. Channel 2. I like Steve Dean. Yeah, I like, I like yeah, him Yeah, I like too. Steve Dean, too. But it'd be too. interesting, that, why, why not him? Because I noticed that uh, he interviewed Roy J. one day, I mean, after the after this Baruti thing, so to speak, on the hotel thing, got me? I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. but, but why not But why not? That's Steve a different Dean? issue. It's not, it sounds confrontational. It is, but it's not, it's not like this. It's not an all-black thing. I mean, see, gee what, whiz. But Bob Wiggins I mean, is there. I mean, Bob's been doing it for hold years. Hold I mean, Hold Why not Bob when you're Williams? talking about the convention hotel, oh yeah, well, you're talking about that's a different ball game. You know, and don't take this wrong when I say this, friends. It's just <laughs> I, I, a, it is what it is. <laughs> you're talking about five or six extremely wealthy white guys. Yes, yes, yes. Mo three of them are billionaires yes. trying to build a hotel on the public dime. Yep, yep, and then yep, you got this yep, one yep. black guy who graduated yep. high school in Portland in '65. The other guy having didn't even live in Portland 20 years ago. Am I Roy J? Yeah, Roy J is the only one from Portland. So you know, and he's a, he's the poorest of them all. <laughs> You know, and, and uh, so yeah, I mean, I can see why Steve Dean. I mean, actually, I would give kudos to Steve Dean for interviewing for, him? for interviewing. But, 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 but you know, the fascinating thing, was, Steve could was, never get those other white guys to come out and talk about it. Okay, so he was basically the lead person for this for this hotel. He's no, he's debating lead. a guy out of Seattle. Yeah, the guy kept shaking his head. No, no, because no, no, the no. other rich, wealthy white guys, and I'm not saying this in a negative way. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, bad yeah, being a rich, yeah, wealthy yeah. white guy. They <laughs> don't want to be out in public. They don't want. For good reason. They don't want their face out. And, you know, so fine. You know, that project has been going on for, what, 50 years? The first time they talked about putting a, a convention center hotel and the convention center. I remember center that one. Yes. It was way back in, what, 1954, 55? I mean, gee whiz. And you know what's funny? I, I guarantee you, when the concept of the convention center and the convention center hotel first came up, the people who were involved back then were not assuming, were not even thinking that there could be a black guy like Roy J., Involving Roy Jameson in elementary school when the whole concept was <laughs> oh, first yeah. thrown out. I remember that. Yes. And, you know, uh, the fact yeah, that a I black guy's involved in it, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that I'm sure there's some guys up at Riverview Cemetery rolling around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know. again, the, the other interesting thing about that, that interview is that I, I called Dean up, and but he won't return my call for that matter. Uh -huh. But the fact of it is, you know, as, as commissioner, what I would have done when I first heard the thing way back when, if I was commissioner, I would have called whoever that lead person and said, how many people are you going to employ from my district or from the county? Okay? Fair? Mm -hmm. What about contractors? You know, things of that nature. Okay? Mm -hmm. What about poor people being on their job? You know, what about after you've built the place? What about the numbers? I mean, I, in all due respect, I'd be asking Loretta, Loretta, hey, that's what you need to be doing. That's your job. Your sitting job right now. You should be very much involved. If you know Roy that well, and hey, that would have been a perk. That would have been a plus. Well, if he was able to been announced on Steve Dean's show, let me tell you how many people are going to be employed here locally. That, that's a good idea. But I, you know, I didn't the, hear the that. first question you want to ask her, and I'd ask you this too. No, yeah, if I consider no this going to I you no and problem. her, no problem. I'll ask her whenever I see her again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you feel the county has a role in getting involved in the convention center hotel? Oh, very and much so. so. Where? It, it very much so. It's in, it's in the it's in the district. I mean, uh, well, some of the major issues is about jobs. People need jobs today. So naturally, there's going to be some jobs there. I mean, are these people going to be local? I mean, what about minorities? What about women? What about uh, minority subcontract? All that kind of stuff. That needs to be part of the table. And then after it's built, 
how many minorities and women and people from the district are going to be involved in the project. Now, let me ask you this. What if you could only choose one area for maximum minority involvement, okay, during the construction of it right. or doing the running of it? Right. Which area do you think is more important? Well, it's in the district, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's just be very upfront with it. It's in, it and it is the most important. Most poor people come from District 2, okay? Mm -hmm. Middle illness, uh, homelessness, that whole nine yard, it comes from District 2. However, it has an impact on the entire economy. It does. Among them it does. It does. But my point is that that should be the lead person then shared with the other, i.e. other colleagues on the, on the, on the, on the uh, on, on Multnomah County on the board, if you will, about blah, 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 and give them maybe a piece of the action. You know, everybody gets a little piece of the action. But percentage-wise, the majority of the, of the participant would be from, if you will, District 2. And I'm not talking about the whole job, understand, 100%. No, maybe 10%, 15%. That's normally the number we normally use for minority and women involvement anyway. Okay, okay. subcontractors. Now, the next question I got for you, and I'm, and I'm, I am going to ask. Please ask. Me. Yeah, when yeah, I ask you, okay, yeah. How would you accomplish that? Because the next thing a business guy is going to say, and you know this, okay, Bruce, I mean, I run that's my a, business. That's easy. That's easy. How, how do I, how do I meet? What path do I take to meet those numbers? No problem. First thing you do, you're asking me for money. You're asking me to subsidize the building of that piece. It's Correct. not your. It's not all your money, okay? Correct. Now, if you don't want to deal with it, then guess what? Go back and get no, your own No, no, no. Assume the business guy says, I agree with you. I want to do it. Yeah, he's right. asking you for help. Because yeah, right. you got to right, remember, right, even though right, he's a right, business right, person, right, right, he's right, still right. a member of the community. Okay, right, right, right. And the, the, and the, and the commissioner. Right, right, right. Okay? Right. Serves them, too. Right, right. So no this problem. person who now agrees with you right. is saying, okay, how do we get this done? Okay. What's the way to do it? This is how you do it. First thing you do, you, you, say, you bring me the specs. And you, they build that building, if you will, okay. on, the, on the table, okay? okay? They know exactly how many people they're going to be using on that job. Okay. Various jobs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? okay. I, would, I would negotiate with, if, it, if it's a union job, then you got, you got the various trades, okay? okay. If it's a non-union job, you got the, uh, the non-union trades, like the AGCs or whatever, okay? So I would either meet with one of those groups and whatever, and we'd sit down around the round table and say, okay, guys, okay, what's critical, what's not critical, okay? And then I'd say, okay, fine, I'm looking for about 10% participation. Okay? okay. So, what what do you feel I can we can get ten percent participation? You name the jobs, okay, right off the front. Okay. So you're talking about naming the individual jobs where you can get that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then and then start from there. Yeah. Not necessarily, but what if the, if after doing all of that, Bruce, on the construction side, right? You don't end up with ten percent in general. Maybe you only end up at three. Oh, no, or 4%. no, no, no. I've been in the business before. You can get the ten percent. You can get the ten. percent You can get the ten percent. Okay. I've been in the business. Okay. Okay, straight, straight up. And the same thing with reference to once the once the building is is complete. Okay. You know, hey, how many maids are you going to have? I mean, jobs. Okay. okay. How many jobs? And most, a lot of times these people, are, a lot of times they're underemployed. They're not as, they may not as technically, uh, they might not have all the technical skills and whatever. But the fact of the matter is, hey, they can change some sheets. They can do maintenance work, things of that nature. Okay. So, so there are jobs available in that okay. job. It's, it's a lot of jobs, now, by the way. Do you think it's, it's do you, should the county commissioner get, be involved in at least expressing what their expectations of wages should be? Because you know you can have a lot of jobs that are part time at the at this place well, where you're making you know ten bucks an hour, but you're only working fifteen hours a week. I agree, but when or are you are you more saying like sh does the county commissioner have the right or sh uh, the position? to talk about what percentage they want no, and no, wage no, no. The and, the as far line, as full, full the time jobs. Line, when they bring me the spec, they pretty well have built the job basically on X number of bucks, okay? okay. And they know they know each, they, they know the wages for each participant as far as the labor force. Yeah, but about afterwards. Oh, afterwards, afterwards, the same thing. Same thing. The same thing. They've got the, they've got the, they spec that whole thing out. Okay. They know exactly what their bottom lines are, okay? okay. Plus or minus 10%. Okay. Bottom line, okay? But look. Okay. Look like we we're gonna we're trying to take a little bit more time, but I really appreciate that. This is really good. What we're gonna do? We're gonna take a short break, and then we'll come back to this conversation. Sounds good. Okay, good. We'll take a short break, folks. We'll be right back with you. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Hey, yeah, we're back. And uh, we have been discussing a number of myriad. In fact, we've been ta talking about endorsements after that and trying to sort of clean up some things in regards to the Multnomah County and some of the endorsements here locally. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very important piece. Uh, one other thing that I, I want to make sure that we get this very clear. The other thing is that when I think that the process of the endorsement process, the Oregonian called me up and sent, basically sent me a, a, a questionnaire, mm -hmm. uh, basically giving the basics, et cetera, et cetera. And I had the questionnaire, and I followed back with the, the uh, I think the woman's name was Ratford or something. But anyway, but the long and short of it all is that I got her on the phone, and I said, look, you know, you really can't really deal with the person. You, you really don't know the person unless you can do an eyeball to eyeball. I don't like the idea of filling, filling out questionnaires because I can get a professional writer to do that kind of a piece. You need to talk to the person. And she sort of agreed with me. She said, well, I have deadline, whatever. I said, well, look, well, you spent some time with me on the phone. So she did. She spent some time with me on the phone. And I told her why, you know what I'm saying? Because I said, at the end of the day, you're still going to write your article based on what you felt anyway. But I want to give you the information from me. And I did that. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that the editorial board of the Oregonian, she told me the editorial of the, of the Oregonian will also have access to that, Bruce. Now, if you saw her interview and you saw this endorsement, be like night and day, mm -hmm. okay? And that's the sad thing about this. The fact of the matter is there was one endorsement here who had total background on all of the candidates, if you will, but yet and still, when, when they come out with this so-called endorsement and add all these other goodies, if you will. Now, by the way, you, you do know that, that we do email. We do email these shows to the other media. Mm -hmm. This is very important. They don't know anything about black folks. This is probably the only place in, the, in town that you can have access to. And all due respect uh, to Bernie, he doesn't do this kind of work. He doesn't do this, you know, and the same thing with the Portland Observer. They just don't do this kind of thing. I've got experience. I used to own the Portland Observer newspaper, and that's what we were doing when the, when the well, posthumous Bruce, this was, well, I, get, I will agree with you, because the, the thing is we have no we have venue no, no. in no Oregon yeah. where people can understand or learn how the black community approaches things or looks at things, and there is no uh, media forum where there can be a, a, a what I would call, a, I hope I'm not, a, a transparent discussion. We need to. We need it. Yeah. You know what I'm Because that's where a lot of misunderstandings come in, because we don't have that. Or going into the horrible job. I mean, they endorse Loretta 80% of the reason because their relationship that they've established with her from years ago, okay? And uh, no, with her former boss. Yeah, it's and, white. And, and, it's really white. Well, it's not no, really and her former boss. But no, yeah, you, anybody who's worked for a senator like, oh, yeah, like yeah. Ron Wyden for 20 yeah, years, hey, come right, on, she knows hey. everybody on the editorial board. She knows her kids. They've, they've been to parties together, probably. Oh, yeah. You understand? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. They may have even gotten a drunk together. Yeah. Oh, you know? Yeah. And who knows? Maybe that, that editor that, that uh, died having a heart attack with. <laughs> He may have hit on her once, yeah. but what I'm getting to, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm getting to is there is a well, old re relationship, yeah. and th this is what is disappointing about the Oregonian as well as other outlets. There's not a curiosity to get to know the other people. You understand? I would. It would be nice if all of us could have leaned on the Oregonian as somebody that had taken the time, put the effort in to learn about. All of the candidates, I, I understand they may not be able to do every single race because there's a lot of races, yeah. but this, this is kind is of an important, important race. Oh, yeah. Because here you got the All race Africa. with a, a black person, and she's running against three black people. Yes, I don't right. think that's ever happened before. No, I don't think so. And don't then, two, so. Don't so. uh, and then two on that, she's one of the few black women, one of the few black people yeah. to ever win an elected seat without being first appointed. Even Charles Jordan was appointed first. Yeah, but guess what? what? Ron Wyden and Earl Blumenauer and all those guys got together at the last minute. Now, remember now, uh -huh. Colin Murray would have won that race. Had, uh, not, I, had not Ron Wyden and, and, and Earl Blumenauer and those guys had not endorsed her and raised the money what? to put the flyers out with the pictures. Bruce, one, you may be right. I don't know. I'm telling you, mean, you I don't... that's exactly what's happening right now. Maybe. She mentions Ron Wyden's name, the rationale. If she didn't mention Ron Wyden's name, it'd be a no-brainer. Yeah, but she's been with him for 20 Teresa years. Teresa would have beat her overnight. <laughs> well, maybe, but what I'm getting to is, she, that's her boss for 20 years. Yeah, but yeah, but she was working for him, Fred. This is All different right. between working for somebody and working with somebody. Now think about that. Yeah, but that was her boss for 20 years. I think that's still, still yeah, but, significant. But, hey, but doing what her boss tells her to do. Correct, <laughs> and that's why I said earlier, the uh, question needs to be asked. Yeah. Why didn't he promote her? Yeah, that's right. And and she should have been chief of staff a long time ago. Maybe, maybe not. Now look. That's a, another good question. Why was she, she never chief of staff? Because I know several other people that work for Ron Wyden 
they moved around yeah. more than her, but they yeah. never were chief of staff. So I know some chief of staff. Oh, I know, but I know, but there are several people that worked for Ron Wine right, for right, many right. years. Oh, yeah, they have never yeah. been chief of staff. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it would be a great. Qu they didn't run for office. That's right. She that's is. That's right. That's right. You could that. That's a fair question. I'm asking the question. Yeah, right now. and and you should. Yeah. yeah you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Ron Wyden. You endorsed her for yeah. a leadership yeah. role yeah. on Multnomah County. Yeah. 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 How come you never made her chief of staff when there was openings? Yeah. I mean, if you saw this this leadership ability in her, why didn't you make her a leader? And same thing with her. Uh, I'd ask Earl Blumenhauer since Earl Blumenhauer's yeah, endorsed her. Boat. He's known her. Yep. Hey, how come you didn't recruit her yeah, uh, to right. work and be your, it, it, in right. leadership it, position and chief of staff and chief of staff as opposed now, to Mark Kraft, who picked up a million bucks consultant on the CRC. <laughs> <laughs> well, look. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I thought I'd throw that in there real quick. Yeah, like, but but Mark Kraft was chief of staff. Yeah, Mark Kraft was was chief of staff yeah, one but time. But he quit and then got went out there to Columbia River Cross and picked up a, the bridge thing, the CRC, and picked up a major. But Mark isn't running. Piece. But Mark isn't running for office. No, he's not, he's not being office. endorsed yeah, right now. Right. So, like I said, that those are great yeah, questions. Question. I would yeah. ask. I would ask yeah, uh, yeah. all of them. Well, you know, but all due respect, hell, I would ask them, how come they never hired you? Well, well, uh, well, that's interesting. That's, a, that's another interesting question. Yeah, they needed. It. I never asked Ron that. I mean, we were just working together. I supported him. I supported him even to the day, and yeah. especially today. The guy is the chair of the Ways and Means. You got my point? Yeah. Uh, from Oregon, you know, we want to make sure we keep him there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of, but this is important to this community. This is important to Oregon, as far as the area that we're talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got poor people. We got mental health issues. We got some major issues in here. Unemployment. I mean, crime, we got some major, he doesn't have the time to sit around and deal with this issue. That's why I'm making the point, around. And even the senior citizen issues. I've got background in senior citizen. I've built senior citizen housing and whatever. My point to Ron is that, hey, look, he's busy doing his thing. Just keep the money coming in here. You know, when I give you a call and say, I need some extra dollars mm -hmm. over here for the state of Oregon. Well, you see, fine. No me problem. as a, I don't as a member of, the, of District 2, I think it's interesting. You've actually built senior housing. Is still active, still there, still considered a success. You understand? Yeah. After what, 34 years? Oh, yeah. 33 we years? We build more. You, you understand? I mean, yeah. when you did this, Loretta and I were in high school. You, you understand? And that thing is still doing well. Oh, yeah. Okay? I'm curious, how come that didn't come up as part of the vetting at, 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 at the editorial board of the Oregonian? <laughs> I mean... You're, you are of a black caliber in, in northeast Portland, of, of Portland, that is rare. You're not the only one, but you're, you're the only one running for office right now, yeah. and you're not something that comes up every day. So as far as experience and things that you've done, it, it is, to me it's shocking that the Oregonian didn't take an opportunity, like I said, to get deeper, give a, a, a fuller picture for everybody to look at of you and Loretta. Because you know one of the things is, I look at this. I don't see any Satans in this race. No, no. You know what I said? No. You got. I know all, everybody's running. Yeah. And like I said, this would this was a great opportunity for the black community and the people of Portland in general. That I think the Oregonian just kind of let let yeah. go by. Well, but but you see, a white person letting a, an opportunity go by like that, that's no big deal because it's not going to change their lifestyle one way or the other. Unless yeah. they're in the room with me and I get to be verbally abusive to them. Well, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> the other thing too. And that's the reason why I wanted to make sure I brought the issue about the Baruti. You know, he was running one of the largest businesses, maintenance business in the state of Oregon, you know, in, in fact in, in, in this country, Coast Janitorial. Mm -hmm. That man's got some background, probably in his hospital. He, he's got some major background. Mm -hmm. He interviewed here because there was something here that could help the community at large, not only just the black community, but the Oregon community. I know, think here's, so a, here's a good example of a person who's had back, went to school, the whole nine yard, mm -hmm. and achieved all these achievements and whatever. But to, to sit up here and play games with him along that line. Mm -hmm. he, in fact, the other thing, as far as I'm concerned, I interviewed him. Sure, I interviewed him. Mm -hmm. He never organized, if you will, a campaign against Loretta. By no means. Under no circumstances. Bruce, you remember, you're a pseudo journalism you're a journalist yourself. Yes. You, in other words, all you can say is that's what he said. You understand? I mean, he no, says no, he didn't. No. She says he did, or no, whatever. I did. Okay. <laughs> now let, let's get the, let's let's get it straight. I did. Okay, you did one. I did. Okay. I was the one that put the thing. I asked her to run, in all due respect. But okay. at the time, I, after I looked at this thing very seriously, and after I looked at this thing very seriously, I knew that that's where in the world in the world, just one on one, she could not have prevented Loretta running against the Ron Wyden group. From getting 51 percent. Well, Bruce, this goes back to what I said about the Oregonian and why it's important that they do more, more digging. Okay, Teresa's a nice person. 
Teresa does not have what it takes at this time to do a job like this, even even as good as Loretta. She doesn't. No, she doesn't. Okay, she's a nice person, and she she's got a passion. I wish Loretta would hire a person like like Teresa. I'm fascinated oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that Loretta hasn't hired a person yeah. like Teresa. Yeah, right. Right. And you know what I mean? Now Loretta's got a lot of experience too. And she's done That would have been a stuff. perfect piece. Yeah. And then that would have given but her the exposure, but she's Who's got it. more experience yeah. than all three people running in that race? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Bruce, you I, the mistake Hey, <laughs> the, mis the mistake, Mr. Broussard, is that you should have run. In the first place, you shouldn't have been telling anybody to run. You yeah. should have just jumped up and run and called us young folks up and say, I need your help. Uh, you know, in all respect, you're right, because I, I made a similar mistake when I was at the Portland Observer, mm -hmm. when I put District 18 together. Mm -hmm. I put District 18 together. Mm -hmm. The rationale was to try to get an area where, where a number of the residents happened to be African American, the issues were. It's, it's in the Northeast Portland. And when I was only when I owned the Portland Observer, I did that, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we went about, quote, getting some people to possibly run. Chad Jedden, Beck, uh, Bang Bang Walker, Harold Williams, I mean, folks were getting around the table. We were talking about this whole piece. And as you know, there's, there's always kind of like, mm -hmm. I want this, this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, Ed Leak came in doing that confused state the first time around. Mm -hmm. He picked it up, okay? But then I was still trying to organize. I should have ran. I should have ran. I should have ran the first day, but I didn't. I was, I was, quote, publisher of the Portland Observer newspaper. And it was my job to tell the story and educate the people across the board from both communities aspect of it. Well, I didn't do that. But then all of a sudden, some, some very interesting women who are very, as you know, we know them all, uh, uh, the, the, Vera, the Vera Katz, the, uh, the Gretchen Kaforis, and, 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 and a number of others, if you will, basically went out and found Margaret. Margaret was not even involved in some of the issues that we were involved in. They She's found still Margaret. not involved. No. They found Margaret, yeah. got her a job at PCC, yeah. and you know the rest of the deal. Now, okay. Margaret is... Now, that wrong. that I, woman not is, is going to go down in history as having the charm life. That woman's yeah, never done yeah, but, anything. But the bottom line, <laughs> yeah, that's how they've treated this community. In all due respect, again, that's, that's because why... Because Margaret can sing. Oh, she can that sing. That woman can sing but, a Negro spiritual like yeah. nobody else has But been. in all due respect, I've heard some of those things about, about her in regards to that's all they looked at. It. In terms, she never got involved. And, and I started no, thinking I, about one, that. One of, the, one of the most embarrassing moments I've ever had in my life in public was in being down in Salem and watching her get up and sing a Negro spiritual. A spiritual that my grandmother used to sing when she was when things weren't good. No, that's just, and that's it just, it just, I just didn't like it. Sometimes I, that's the only thing they've allowed. I didn't I mean, like it. You, you would think, again, coming from the community standpoint, she's been sitting on the ways and means. Abel Gordon was ways and means. What are the benefits? Where, where have we gotten any money? Yeah, my, minority employment uh, did not increase. Minority business d education dropped. Has, education has soared from the standpoint uh, uh, of dropouts and whatever. Yeah. You know among minorities. Correct. And, I, and, I, and, and the percentage of, my, of, my, of educated black people that live in Oregon that were educated in other markets. In yes. other words, oh, yes. you know, the oh, percentage yes. of, let's say, a doctorate. You meet a black guy who's got a doctorate degree. Um, the, the interesting question you should ask him, just for your own, it doesn't matter, it's great that he's got a doctorate degree. Ask him, did he graduate from a public school in Oregon? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, the fascinating is most of these, most of these highly educated black people uh, that we do have in Oregon, we've got more now than we've ever had before, um, they're not from Portland. Yeah. They're not yeah. from Oregon. I know. I know. You know, they, they got their education someplace else, well, and then I'm for one reason or another, ended up here in Oregon. We, we're going we're gonna to do something different. And I guess this other thing, and that, as you know, when Battle of Measure 11 came aboard, all of a sudden, a lot of these young kids, you know, we all do stupid things in the early end, okay? Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, they're getting in 10 years, 15 years, you know, and they're coming out. Bruce. And they've got, the, they've got this on their record, man. Where, where, they, where do they go? They, get, they go nowhere. But, Bruce, Measure 11, you... You re read what you get. It's hard to, wrong. It's know, hard to get a measure 11. I, I now, it's that. easy to get a felony but, in the state, but, they but it, it is very difficult. You have to work at it to get a measure it, 11. They got it on, and I'll be right up front with it. They uh -huh. got it on the back of black people. Nope. I'll be right, nope. Nope. Not, now, that's just my opinion. Nope. Okay, that's my, I, we can talk about that on another case. But the point I'm making, there are young people across the board. In fact, there are more whites that are in prison on Measure 11 than there are blacks. You and know you, that? And you know what's fascinating? I know that. That's why, you know, it's funny. Since Measure 11 came in, for the Measure 11 charges, rape, oh, yeah, yeah, murder, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, child molestage, hold it. The gap between how long black people get in prison for committing those crimes and how long white people do has, has shrunk massively. Interesting. Okay, but you know it's still very wide? Right. Oh, yeah. The drug war. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a white person gets charged for having drug yeah. and what a black person... Yeah. 
black person is treated more harshly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you oh, yeah. understand? Oh, yeah. But a white person, in oh, yeah. general, this is on yeah. averages. Oh, yeah. This is not like in every individual right, case. Right, 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 right. But when it comes to Measure 11 crimes, rape, forcible sodomy, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, murder. I'm, I'm hearing you. I'm <laughs> you hearing. understand? But there are some other things, too, that were involved yeah. in the process. I mean, they, they got to, my point, I guess the point I'm making is, I'm going to be at the table this time around. And you should. And I'm going to have you. We're going to discuss this issue. I'm not going to leave this program now. I want you to understand No, that. and you should We're going to discuss these issues. But, Bruce, if you lose this race, and I hope you don't. Oh, I'll keep doing it. Okay? I hope you don't. And I hope, I hope there's a runoff. I think people should vote for you, even if they like Loretta, just so there's a runoff. Because I, I be feel table, it will be great to have two of the most experienced black oh. people in public life in Portland having a discussion this summer about where we're going to go next. I will be there. Well, that's if you one get the runoff. One way or the other. You know, it would be a great one. It would make, it would make, if you, if you support Loretta, it's going to sound really strange. She's going to get a lot of votes. Oh, if yeah. you support Loretta, you know, consider voting against her. Vote for, uh, vote for Bruce. And because we do need in the black community, and when I say the black community, black people are the focus, but we need our white fa friends right. and family around it too. This is very unique. We need a discussion yeah, about, about poor people, about poor people, about the lack of jobs, Drugs, about the mental lack illness, of mental We illness. need a, a, a full discussion on it, and this will be a great race to do it in. Yeah, yeah. You know, and because like I said, I feel personally, Loretta and Bruce are two of the more capable black people in the community that have stepped out and run for office. There may be other black people out there who will be better, but they have not run for office. We've got two great ones, probably the best two on this issue, to run for office ever, and they're running against each other. Let's have a chat. Yeah, let's have a chat. Let's have a discussion. Well, you know, I think it's very important that to know this is not a personal attack on Loretta or anyone for that matter. No. I'm just saying, I've been sitting here for about 25 years now. I know the issues. And we've got to discuss these issues. Correct. And I'm having some concerns about the fact that issues are not being concerned. And Oregonian being the being the last major newspaper in this whole state who communicates to others. And people don't, you know, it's like a gate around this area. You know, they don't have no access. I mean, we are viable folks. We are viable Americans, if you will. We're contributors. Okay. Well, we have the same ills and problems, but there are poor folks too in here. Trust me. There are more poor white folks within this district than there are blacks, okay? Okay, I mean, agree with it's that. a very serious situation. See, and so, uh, so it's important, if you will, that, that Oregonians understand where we come from. That's why we're talking. That's why we're spending so much time on this, because no, the, the Oregonians should revisit, if you will, their endorsement. Uh, they're, not, they're not going to do that. The only opportunity for that is no, no, they are re revisiting because that's that's what we're doing. About. That's what we're doing now. Okay, okay, all right. And we're going to email them this, this this show. Okay, and hopefully they'll see it. And we'll keep talking. Well, about if there's a runoff, let's hope they do a lot better. Let's hope they get, you know, I'd love to see Oregonian. I know a lot of people are disappointed in the Oregonian. I'm one of them, but I'd love to see the Oregonian become um, that tool, that instrument, that value we can rely on you, you send to, to vet out candidates. I, I know I'm wishful thinking because there's a lot of different ways people get endorsed. You, you understand? But. It would be, man, they really blew a great opportunity yeah. here. Well, the League of Women Voters, I think, is a, is a, that was another year. They was very organized, if you will. But there was no folks there. There was no interesting. I interviewed, but mm -hmm. I was by myself. Yeah. And I couldn't talk to the issues. And a lot of the folks who were asking the questions weren't really addressing the issues of District 2. They just didn't know. Okay? And it's very important that the, that the folks who are running for office, they, they need to know what the issues are within that respective area. The county is a very important piece. In all due respect, we need to know how much money. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to audit. We, we need an audit, if you will, of the county. How much money do they have here in this county, and where is it going? Very, very important. And then a the jail situation about was it uh, Utopia or whatever they call the jail situation that's closed down and whatever. I don't understand why we're letting folks out. We got a mental illness problem, and they're going into the jail with, with those individuals together, if you will. Why not just go on and open the doors up and make it a mental illness institution? Why not? We used to have we we used to have uh, damage. We used to have damage. You know what I mean? We closed it up. We got folks out here on the street. They don't need to be on the street, Fred. They need to be in a place they get taken care of. They shouldn't be given drugs, if you will, at at the door and giving them out, and then they just walk out on the street and sell them. I've been approached down at Safeway with drugs from a mental ill person, mm -hmm. making a buck to go out and get a fix. Or seeing or, seniors, or, or maybe seeing, some food. You see me? Or seeing a senior, if you will, going in the dumpster, picking up trash. Call them bag ladies. That's ridiculous. Or people on the corner. That's ridiculous. So anyway, I don't want to get caught up in another lobbying effort aspect of it, but I think we've had quite a chat. 
I really appreciate you, Fred. And, uh, we didn't we didn't talk a little bit. We, you got to come back on. We got to make sure we educate folks about that whole issue with Trader Joe's. Yeah, anytime, Bruce. Okay, please do that. Okay. But Bruce, good luck with your race. Well, very good. Good luck. Very happy to see you running, and I hope out there you're a good example to other experienced black people like you. Um, and they're there. There's gonna be there's gonna be and other they're races. They're, they're there. I th I think the community needs you uh, in your in your in your declining years, as they say. To, to, oh no no, it's to just jump start. out to just start. But I'm a jar here, like you. You know yeah. how we are. You know, it's like the ever ready battery. You know, we just keep going and going and going. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna leave this community. I love this community. I love Oregon. I love the people here. In fact, I love everybody here that's running. Mm -hmm. Just unfortunately, we need leadership now, very very badly. And hopefully, you'll understand. But please go out and vote, regardless if you vote for me or not participate. You've got to participate. It is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And the only way that can maintain is that if, in fact, you get out and vote and get involved. And if you like Loretta Smith, vote for Bruce anyway. <laughs> let's, have, let's have a runoff. Well, thank you very much, but I appreciate that very much. Well, folks, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time around. Have a good one.